GM, GM, everybody, and welcome back to Music NFT Radio Podcast. We have an amazing topic today about music NFTs. So if you're listening in on all podcast sites or YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And let's get some support for Web3 because what's going on in music NFTs is truly amazing. And today we're talking about why collect music NFTs. So a lot of people are sleeping on the music NFT markets and we've seen a lot of growth, especially with the independent artists. And even through the bear market, when you see other NFT communities struggling, the music NFT community is still really strong. So we're going to be talking about why collect music NFTs, why are these communities forming, and what's bringing in the collectors. And so today we have a legend in the Web3 space. He's a big collector and supporter of music NFTs. We got my man Sheba King. What's up, Sheba? What is going on? Good morning. Good evening. Happy to be here. Love music NFTs. Love NFTs. Known Dill for a minute. Know a lot of these people um, in the crowd. So I'm just really excited to talk about this topic as we segue into NFT New York City, where there's going to be a lot of music and NFTs going on there. So really awesome time to be doing this. Hell yeah, dude. Music is on the come up in a big way, and we've seen a lot of breakout artists even since last NFT NYC. We've seen them continue to elevate and take even more of the spotlight, I would say, within Web3. So this is going to be the historic event for music NFTs having a bigger presence than ever, I would say. So I'm really excited for it. We're doing web stock. We have a live music festival and event that everyone is hyped about. So I can't wait for New York. And it's also great to see so many of these artists that I've supported from the beginning, that I've even helped get into Web3, that have gone on and become really successful. And I know you're really big within the Moonshot community and Violetta's community and others as well. So, yeah, Sheba, I mean, why don't you just share a little bit about your story and how you got into music NFTs because you came in from the collecting side and you've been involved in the PFPs and the DGEN communities. So maybe you could talk more about how you got in because I think a lot of people in Web3 will relate to that experience because everybody's in the DGEN projects, everybody's in the PFPs and most of those collectors probably don't have a music NFT yet or at least they haven't supported all these great independent artists out here. So yeah, maybe you could talk a little bit about what's going on. So for me, it, uh, NFTs seemed very similar to cryptos, uh, simplified even more. It, it seemed very similar to trading cards or other digital items from games that we have played. And uh, jumping into NFTs back in October of 2021 was a risky time. Um, it's like jumping into you know Bitcoin or Ethereum for the first time, putting in $500 and being like, is this real money? Same thing about the NFTs. I felt the same way. So... As I was dabbling into regular NFTs around that time, I was jumping in spaces. I, I was literally coming into to your space still and sitting down and listening and be like, who the heck is this guy? And I you was know, listening about music NFTs in general, topics of, of the space, and uh, then started expanding, started meeting more and more people, more projects, learning the insides and outs of, uh, of Web3 from the Discord end to the Twitter end, and then got to run into uh, some beautiful ladies uh, like uh, Violetta to start, and then of course you have Ray and Emma after. But originally it was just it was just you know you guys. It was really just Dill, and then it was V, and then it was Sammy and Josh, and then it was just the four of you. That was you know that's a, that's all that was there for music. Um, of course there were people also involved in the space at the time, but everybody was starting out. Everybody was like dabbling into introducing themselves. So I think like the first year of NFTs I missed, which was like 21, 22, you know, like, okay. So I guess it was like 2021, 2020, 21 is like the year, like board apes and lazy lions and some of these other projects jumped on. And there was a lot of discovery. And then once we, we move over to the 2021 year to 2022, when a lot of the work was built in the bear market. And that's when we attach it to music NFTs. I felt like there was something different here. So correlating to when I first met V to now, we've definitely expanded the space, the music side of the NFT space, sheesh, it has to be more than 100%. It has to be something outrageous like 
hundred percent. It might even be close to a thousand. At least we've ten. Yeah. We've at least ten yeah. x in the space. I mean, I know a lot of my collectors are up way over ten x in their NFTs, and I know a lot of my Violetta NFTs have even sold for more than ten x. I, I mean, and the community itself has probably grown even more than ten times. So, the growth is extraordinary. And the value that's coming from music NFTs is big too, but people on the outside, maybe they see some of the lower volume or lower trading activity compared to some of those big PFP communities, but it's real collectors out here that are making sales. And within our communities, we've seen a lot of those collectors have big benefits from owning the NFT, whether it's utility and concerts and events and merchandise, or whether it's just being able to sell that NFT for more than you bought it for. I think all of those things are amazing utility, right? Um, beyond that, it's like not just the utility, but can you also sell that NFT? So I do think there's real liquidity in trading going on in music NFTs. I've experienced it myself. I think that's what holds back a lot of bigger collectors from coming into the space. But I think it's really about supporting independent artists straight from the jump and getting in on their career early. You know, when a lot of these legendary collections like the Bored Apes or the Crypto Punks were just starting out or just minting, they had low volume. They had, you know, lower prices, especially compared to now. And a lot of the hallmarks that people used to say, oh, I'm not going to buy a Crypto Punk. I'm not going to buy an Ape. They don't have volume. They don't have trading activity. Like not too long ago, people were saying those same kind of things. And I think we can dive into that a little bit more uh, with Glassy too, because we have Glassy on to the show and he's a big collector who's actually been supporting me from the start. So we'll we'll get into that in a minute, but I still want to hear more from Shiba King. So like, all right, so you started seeing music NFTs coming up into the space. You started seeing a, a few of us artists grinding. And then as a collector, you know, was there something specifically for you that kind of flipped the switch to where you're like, okay, I see this has big potential. So for me, I was thinking on all different cylinders. I think I'm going to be in the space for a while. I mean, I grabbed Web3 and NFTs as something I wanted to work in and be, be a part of. Um, you know, Glassy is the type of person who also has like spaces every day and stays, try to stay consistent. And it's something that you do, Dylan, I do. So when I started seeing this being out there so much, I was able to kind of get a grasp of the difference. And okay, let's just start on the financial side. Of course, there isn't going to be numbers. Like people look at volume immediately or sales and how many people are involved in the collection, like which ones are doing the best. Those are only the, the only ones that can succeed. And I learned that over time. Like everybody always looks for things that are hyped and, you know, that's the place to make money. That's completely not true. You'll make more money in smaller communities, smaller cap projects, lower total projects, smaller communities. As long as there's buy and sell volume, every community, every project is going to have volume. But it needs to have volume to generate money. So it doesn't matter where you go for that. But music NFTs, I felt like there was a lot of volume even though there wasn't like, you know, hundreds of sales a day, but they'll still get 20 or 50 sales a day, but their communities are smaller. So I'm not fighting with 700, 800 people to flip my NFT. I'm fighting with 10 a day, maybe, maybe, maybe 20 different people a week to sell a music NFT. Um, there's a lot of also extra things that come with it. I felt like the networking for the music NFT side was easier going to events there's less like walking around with like like headless chickens when it's like there's music and there's people to, to talk to i think the atmosphere in general to talk to each other is better when there's music involved you know it's it, maybe it's a little bit less stressful for people who maybe are a little bit more antisocial they're just being music and the people seem to be a little bit more open armed in this community in the music nft community like side of it than the regular space and that helps with investing and networking, like I said, and just branching out. So I started to see that and I grabbed on immediately. I try to tell people, you know, even to bring people into the NFT space in general, I always tell them you can come in at any level, you know, price point we can discuss, but there are smaller projects you can get in like Dills or V's or Sammy's or Josh or Ray's or Emma's. The, the list is endless on some of these musicians where you can still make sales, 0.02, 0.05 sale and then flip it for one ETH. I mean, across all those names, I could tell you one of ones that sold for more than one ETH, and they were minted for 
fifty dollars. So you can't get that in other projects. And if you miss it, I can tell you where you can make it again in the next one. V's next drop, Dill's next drop, Sammy's next drop, Ray's, you know, Emma's, you know, some of these projects we've seen how quickly they can grow. And I use V's as an example. Um, you know, something that was worth a few thousand, you know, after mint out, maybe twenty five, fifty thousand the whole ecosystem was worth. And now our ecosystem is, is very close to well above a million dollar ecosystem if you count both our projects. At the high, it was like 1.3. And I have calculated this across the board on some other projects, like some big name projects, and they, they have not done numbers like that in the market. You know, their sales aren't consistent. Their floor, their sales might have been there, but their floors have dropped and the sales have slowed down um, well, to what they were doing. So manipulation in a yeah. lot of those markets, which people under undervalue and Music NFTs seem to have a lot less of that type of manipulation going on. But I like everything you said, man. I, I know there's so much uh, you know, potential and you don't need all the volume in the world to be successful as a collector, right? You just need some something that you know is going to continue making sales. So that's why I always look for a founder or a creator who's grinding every day that's going to keep showing up, right? I might not make 100 sales a day, but you know I'm going to be here consistently. I've been doing it for two years. Meanwhile, you might get a hyped up project that's selling well in the bull market, but the founders haven't developed the right habits to continue that activity, right? Maybe they just got lucky. Maybe they got on the front page. Maybe they caught a trend. But if they're not putting in the daily habits to actually grow the community and drive sales consistently, and they're just kind of thriving off of a big spike in sales or a viral moment, then I don't think that kind of momentum keeps up. Whereas when you build like me or V or Sammy, we're consistently here building and grinding every day. And I think that's what kind of creates like a momentum explosion where you have a huge breakout. And just like you said, man, it's it's crazy. You know, I've had an NFT sell for two ETH was my biggest sale, which was huge. I've had several NFTs sell for one ETH, we've had 17 NFTs sell at one ETH and, you know, a lot of big things happening within the community. And a lot of people actually minted my project in the beginning. And my mint price, this was a long time ago, it was about 0.2 ETH. And this was really early in NFTs back when it was mostly one of ones. There was not these big randomized mints. But that 0.2 ETH is now worth 4 ETH in total NFT value last two years so yeah it's maybe not a hundred and a thousand x board ape in in one year but it is a consistent growth that's real value and you know i'm gonna be here grinding until we have that moment right and i think it's just gonna take time till music nfts have that moment but inevitably there's gonna be you know not just one two there's gonna be five ten twenty different big music NFT projects. And then in the future, there's going to be thousands, right? So that's how early we are. If there's only a handful of artists that we can identify as the top independent artists in music NFTs right now, I mean, imagine where this tight knit community is going to be in five years and in 10 years. And someone that's actually seen the growth of music NFTs, the growth of the Bored Apes from Mint to now being even a collector, the growth of crypto punks and the growth of this entire community, even down to being an original Dill VIP NFT minter on the original Rarible contract in 2021. We have my man Glassy, who is a freaking legend. He's been diamond handing that crypto rich NFT. I think he was one of the first to get it, perhaps even at 0.2 ETH. We were on Clubhouse every day grinding before Twitter Spaces. And he believed in music NFT before anyone else because he's a musician and he comes from the industry and he knows all the problems that music NFTs solve. But I can't stress it enough. When me and Glassy were on Clubhouse, like most of the people there weren't even sure if music NFTs could actually do anything or solve a problem because at that time, there was nobody there who understood the music industry. So I give you my man, Glassy. What's up, brother? What's up? I love the conversation. It's also interesting because although the time flies so quickly, it's also like we've really come so far in even a year span or two year span. I feel like certainly maybe further than maybe the 10 years previous or 20 years previous, maybe even longer, really, uh, because music 
has been a very tricky thing to monetize. Maybe the best examples we have are some of those superstars that just covered so much ground and had so much charisma that they were able to like sell a million dollars worth of mixtapes out of their trunk. You know, that like classic uh, cliche. That's, it. That's what we're doing. You know? here. But it's like, yeah, it's that kind of move aspect. where you're like, you know what? I'm going to go uh, what in the business world you might say DTC, right? Direct to consumer, right? I'm going to go straight to the consumer. I'm going to find a way to become my own bridge of my own distribution. And if I can start building those pathways, I think anyone that, anyone that was, you know, had even slightly a clear brain uh, saw the opportunity, but we didn't necessarily know how to make the most of it in the timing that we were in. So it was great that you were able to move swift enough, whether we knew what was going on, whether it was unlockable content, whether it was our own custom contract or whatever it was, I think it was great to be an early mover and at the same time be able to show on the blockchain consistency over time is what produces results just like in the real world, right? We're not only in this magical Web3 world, but in the real world, you're an entrepreneur. You are a business. You're a brand. Uh, being able to rely on certain things, whether it paid or not, uh, it pays an attention to have a certain amount of streams. So if you have a certain track record, like, hey, look, I can maneuver a brand out of nothing into something, that's a hell of a accomplishment. And now we have even better tools where the things that we were just wondering, oh, what might be available someday? Now you have your choice of like five or 10 different token gated experience platforms that you could just roll out and immediately roll a token out, roll an NFT collection out, sell, do your whatever, white label, white, li you know, pre-sale list or whatever you want to call it. Um, all those kind of exactly all those little intricate and, steps and that before you know like oh my goodness you were paying literally tens of thousands of dollars to a dev or huge percent off your cap table right off the rip to a dev team to do these simple things now we have the tools they're like just free tools at our disposal yeah man it's crazy like we've been through so much from me starting on rareable which is when you first bought me which ended up being you know, not the best decision with these shared storefronts. But back then, like you said, you had to go out and get a whole dev team and you had to have those connections to the point where I am now where I've just minted my new contract myself. I am the dev because the tools are here to where now I've learned basic coding knowledge and I can now implement my own smart contract. But also another thing I wanted to touch on in the development of music NFTs, because this was huge for me when I was first learning. It was like getting over that hump of realizing that like not every single thing has to be automated for you to actually provide utility. Like at first I was like, all right, like, so I make this NFT, like how do I give people something? How do I get people a ticket? And it was only after learning that I realized like, oh shit, I have to make that. Like I have to make the website where they go on and sign up and get their ticket. But that's not that hard. It's just, I think a lot of people that don't understand NFTs don't understand that part of it where it's like, if you want an automated process, you can build it. But on the other side, you can just mint a basic NFT and then get in touch with that collector and deliver them whatever it is you want to deliver. And in the early days, and even for people who don't know about NFTs now, I think that's kind of hard to understand. But it's cool because you can just mint an NFT or sell your artwork or anything you want to do and then deliver some of those use cases and some of that utility. And for music, it's so natural. And I always saw that, which is like there's so many things that you can reward a token holder with through music. We already do live events. We already do merchandise and ticketing and all this stuff that most NFT collections are striving for, right? Most NFT collections out there right now, except a few like Yuga Labs and Bored Apes being one of them, have, you know, most of them are promising, oh, we will do a big party in the future one day. Oh, we will have shows and concerts that you can get access to. Oh, we're going to deliver merch in the future. But musicians have been doing this for a decade, like, like myself, right? Musicians like yourself have been doing this for so long. Yeah, why, why did all these different projects it. raise all these millions of dollars but not do any of those parties? And why did we – yes, we maneuvered well. Like I'm not going to – um I'm not going to cry about it, but what, but we didn't drop million, you know, million plus raising collections. And yet 
we're, we are still throwing some of the best parties. Um, so it's kind of just right? like and, we're at the forefront of is... making the culture, whether or not you uh, had some super hype, multi-thousand ETH transaction volume really isn't the point. If anything, we're seeing the deeper we get into the bear market, like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did all those projects do with all that money? And it's not just like the top few. Maybe look at the top 50. Damn, look at the top 100. Get some stats back. It's not even a little bit of money either. It's a lot of money. I, I've, this is something that always pissed me off. It's like, I don't know how you can run these projects. And, and some of these do extremely well. Like they make. Yeah, like silly money. Yeah, dollars. like breaking like yeah. 9 million, 12 million, 15 yeah. million plus. Like, like they could they could give $200,000 back to the community. And it would be the first time an NFT project has ever done that without secretly rugging them first and being like, we saved the project. Like there was a time where people were rugging their own projects saying they got hacked just to save it, to make them look cool. It was fucking, it's intense. It was happening it's, so much. It's ridiculous, dude. Yeah. And here's, again, here's another thing. It's that basically, all right, first of all, we know there's manipulation and I do wonder how many of these projects spent a lot on manipulation that then makes it look like they made more. But in reality, they spent a lot of their money manipulating it and now people think they made more than they did so let's put that oh, stuff aside that's a really and good point that's a really good a point. let's put that people. aside for a moment though hold on hold on let's put that aside for a moment because we know that's rampant in the nft space but putting that aside let's assume they did make whatever it's obvious that they could have made off of some of the numbers right how many of these projects have made over a million dollars in primary sales and then their market cap has absolutely tanked or even probably gone below a million dollars compared to me, Violetta, Sammy. Like, I'll tell I'm you, sure I'll all tell you how many of them. Have hit over all million. of them. I'll just get, I'll just cut right to the chase. All of, all of them. them. Like seriously, and me, Violetta, Sammy, you know, our collections all hit over a million dollars of value. And even now in the bear market, I think we're holding pretty damn close, especially compared to the multiples that you see how other projects have gone down. But I know Shiba mentioned V's project, I, I think almost hit 1.5 million at some point. And like, if you consider the rares, I'm sure it hit more than that. You know, my collection was well over a million, especially considering the rares. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at some of these bigger collections and they, what they've done is maybe raised 10 million in primary sales and their market cap tanks. Meanwhile, you know, someone like me, V or Sammy, we maybe haven't even, or I know, like we haven't done a million in primary sales, but the point is we create value, right? Because people who are newer, they ask, what is the market cap? The market cap is the amount of money that's available to your collectors at a certain price. So if you create a million dollar market cap off of $200,000 in sales, it means that you've made five times the money for your community. And so that's what's big about the music NFTs that I see is they're consistently delivering value and higher market caps than what people are paying. And that's because the innovation is real. The growth is organic, right? I think this comes back to what I was saying, because if your growth is not organic and you're paying for a lot of it, then it's hard to sustain. But if your growth is organic and genuine, then it's not as hard to sustain that upward momentum because you're adding new people and expanding daily. So I think that's what's happening with music NFTs. There's so much ground to cover. You're 100% correct. It, it, it really is uh, been a lot of researching on my own and learning as I go through, especially in this space. That's something you have to do on your own. There's so many things we can learn from each other, but experience... And being here is the best way to get it. Like being active, being on Twitter, being involved in conversations, you're just listening. You don't have to speak. You come up here and listen, sit down and listeners. But you have to you have to invest. You have to open up multiple wallets. You need to buy projects you like. You gotta do it yourself to, you know, learn some of these not so fun parts of Web3. Um, you know, getting some of this information, stuff that, you know, we talk about, Dill and, and Glassy on like what some of these projects are doing coming new into the space you don't really look at that and there was moments where i was ignoring it when i was like i knew shit was going down Dude, my, my advice to people right about now is so i don't know if i'm just jaded or if i actually am just finally like woken up to give really good advice but i would pretty much tell people like don't do it like just don't do it save your eth do something else with it yep 
No, DeFi. It's, it's true. Like, go, do you have DeFi, to diversify. Yield farming. Um, we we were just talking about options. Like, go get some stocks. Get some stocks. This is not financial advice, but we were just exploring different options of like, uh, you could have a hundred stocks, and then you could have an opportunity of making money through options on those hundred stocks. Like, there's so many different ways of making money. The idea that you're gonna buy the right NFT and it's gonna skyrocket. I would just say, pop that balloon. That doesn't usually happen. Spend a bunch of time with people that you really believe in and invest in them and invest in that NFT and that culture because you believe in them and you're part of that community. And there's way bigger value propositions than that floor price going up tomorrow, trying to scalp on NFT things. Like, it's kind of mayhem. I would say, uh, after even spending a tremendous amount building a beautiful collection, I love so many of my NFTs. Uh, but just the same, I don't think it's a place for just like playing around unless you're ready to understand it's a very high price of doing business. It's a luxury item. And the biggest takeaway you'll ever get is the social ROI, the social, the connections, the people like even knowing you. Right. We haven't talked in a while. I hop in here like we're all friends because we are. We spend so many hours together uh, howling and, and chatting and you know, chopping it up and going through drama and, you know, all the all the things that you do when you're in that NFT space. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these people, the thing is, a lot of these people are like traders, to put it nicely, or in another way, they're just here to make flips. And like, they're not here to hold something for two years that goes up 20x. They're here to hold something for two days that goes up 20x. And it's gambling, right? Versus what we do is building businesses, connecting, investing in each other. And so, Glassy, you've been really successful, uh, you know, collecting. You you gotten into the Bored Apes early. And I remember when they were minting and I'm dumb enough to have not gotten in, right? <laughs> so anyway, to me, I mean, I've seen the community develop and, and I know plenty about it, but I want to hear your perspective what do music NFTs need or what are we going to see that's going to elevate music NFTs to at least to the level that PFPs are now or, or more to the mainstream within the Web3 space? Um, I think I have an interesting answer for that. And it's a little bit of a weird answer. But do you remember the period of time when Steve Stout was just like brokering deals for music acts he was like this suddenly this amazing bridge between like corporate brands and uh cultural creators that maybe otherwise would never have that doorway open to them i'm not saying this is the answer but it was just an interesting moment i just remember being like astounded that this was finally happening and i feel like that's part of the wave uh do you remember the wave when red bull was investing in the X games and just crazy amounts of cultural, just there were so many things. I felt like there was a period of time where every concert, every cool party, everything that was happening in so many different cities was all sponsored by Red Bull. Do you remember that time? Am I tripping? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that's like when Red Bull was coming to the top and I just think you know, like it's major sort of money. Difference. I feel like it's major money when we can start channeling major money from big brands and creating big experiences and actually having unified experiences. Uh, I think these kind of situations can usher people in. More people can come in through onboarding. I think this these outrageous and outlandish advertising budgets that we kind of we don't even see. We're like, oh, yeah, those advertising budgets are big. But I don't think we really realize how big they are. And that even some portion of those going into our culture building would be like that next wave of those incredible um, Red Bull. I can't even imagine what the actual price ticket yeah. was on some of those. Right. And, and you know what? We kind of see some of that. Like within Web3, you see some of the big brands and protocols bringing in people. But what's also a shame is you but see them you, going out and booking, you, booking a celebrity do who that? doesn't care about web I have to say, I see no onboarding happening anywhere. I see no systematic onboarding from protocols or otherwise. Yes, I see money getting spent. I see a lot of activity and energy. I definitely see activity and energy around onboarding for bringing more developers onto protocols. 
But I have to say, I don't see a ton of onboarding activity going on, generally speaking. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's hard to onboard the masses. I think music has that potential because everyone loves music and there are so much uh, that music NFTs can do. And I, I think that with these big corporate brands, whether it's corporate brands outside of Web3 or even brands within Web3, it's the same issue is that a lot of these brands aren't tapping into the Web3 artists yet. And, and, and especially within our industry, it's a little frustrating because you see these big brands that are like bring in some big celebrities spending God knows how much money on someone who doesn't care about Web3. If you're lucky, maybe they'll post about their show within Web3 where they could take that money and book like five amazing Web3 artists who are going to take the money and put it back into building Web3, back into you know, the community, back into buying NFTs. I mean, even furthermore, think about all the big PFP projects that booked a celebrity or multiple celebrities. If they would have given some of that money to music NFT creators, all of us would have had their PFP, whatever that is, right? For the amount of money that like has gone into celebrities who don't give a shit about web three who would just as quickly floor a board ape as the second they got it for example meanwhile if you would have taken just a fraction of that money and paid it to music artists in web three you know the first thing a lot of us would do is turn around and buy a freaking ape or a punk or whatever it is right and just the point being like you have to follow where some of the money goes and if creators and musicians, especially within our community, were getting more of this business, I do think the money would go back into building Web3. And it is inherently to connected to getting some of those bigger brands interested. In. And I do think it's going to take more marketing and more knowledge around the world that there is this upcoming group of Web3 artists. And what the hell does Web3 artists even mean? Yeah, I, think, I honestly think understand. it's about how do we get more structured, more efficient, more into the framework of enterprise building. It doesn't have to be a, rec a recreation of the old model, but I think it is definitely a high level enterprise build that's required if you want to do big business. If you want to be entertaining, uh, not just entertaining like to audiences, but entertaining to the boards and people that are moving around these huge advertising budgets, I think it takes putting together festivals takes having dedicated tracks where you know you're going to get a certain amount of eyes, a certain amount of visibility, a certain amount of intelligence about the people that are there. And if there's a clear understanding on both, uh, in both directions, then groups of people stand to generate tons of prosperity. And they're usually not cut into that uh, circumstance. And if we leave it to just the typical how things are done, then they'll probably stay the way they are. Because they're not going to just start handing like, oh, let's give it to independent music artists because that's a good thing. But they would start giving the money if there was an atten enough of an aggregate attention. The audience is big enough, then they'll come. And maybe one, two, three, five, it takes 10 different communities coming together in order to have the uh, quote unquote audience big enough. But if that's the case, then we can do that. We can do that in an aggregate way, in a stacking the communities way. And I think a lot of it is just doing business like the bigger businesses do it, doing business in the larger cycles and time frames, uh, making bigger and better decks and, and um, financial projections so that we can land bigger budgets and do bigger events, right? Have floating cities and do crazy stuff. Um, there's pretty much no one we don't have access to. So it's pretty much dream bigger, form bigger and better structures and execute on a bigger level because we have a huge baseline of experience to build from absolutely man and i know that's a lot of what you guys are trying to do with moon risers so shout out to you excited to be on the show on friday and talk a little bit more about that and for anyone who wants to hear more of me and glassy chatting about some great stuff they're doing you can check out the podcast we did on music nft radio just look up uh, glassy music nft radio on youtube and you'll easily find that great discussion all about funding and web3 and accelerators and growth but i think to close off that topic it's just it's a tough decision whether it's the brand within web3 or outside of web3 because it's the balance between like, do you book a giant celebrity who like maybe could get more unique new eyes onto what you're doing? Or do you look to the celebrities here 
or in Web3, I shouldn't say celebrities, just musicians in, in general is what I'm talking about more. Because I honestly think within Web3, maybe I only have 60,000 followers, but you know, 50,000 of them are freaking NFT people versus an artist might have a million followers, but literally none of them trust this artist for NFTs. So like whatever NFT they're with, people are just going to say, oh, look, there's a project just throwing art, throwing money at some celebrity, right? Whereas if I'm with an NFT project, there's 50,000 motherfuckers that buy NFTs every day that are going to say, yo, Dill is performing at this big party. So I really think it's it's both sides. The, some of the communities here within Web3 need to realize that they should take some of that budget and put it to the musicians here in Web3 because uh, three so or four in that Web3 part, I agree. Musicians. In that part, I agree. One thousand percent. And I actually am glad you brought that up. I'm going to have to step out in a minute to grab a call. But I glad you brought that up, because what I mean is for us at our independent level to operate larger and participate in that revenue, not that they should keep going to, quote unquote, a list celebrities that have this massive following, because just to your point, they might have a million followers. But first of all, the social platform is going to limit the hell out of them. So even if they make a post, most of their followers are not going to see that. Um, so they'd have to make a bunch of posts. It would have to be really late, really engaged, right? Almost on that like partner level where they they maybe have an equity stake and they want to push it so hard from all their different channels. That's a different level. Now they're participating as like a sovereign independent. But that's not even what we're talking about. We're saying, you know what? Yeah, let, let us put it together point? so that we can go get that Nike money the Adidas money, the Rolex, whatever it is, like any of these big companies, like they're all within reach. And if we move on their terms, they're we, here. They're, they're literally here. Yeah. hundred percent. They're here in web three and they want reach in web three. They're already invested in it. So it's, it's going to come in, in due time when people start to realize that, you know, three to five web three artists can be booked for, a fraction of the celebrity's fee and will actually bring more legit attention to a project because and you make a great point everything is so heavily algorithm based now nothing is about your followers when i i can tweet i love nfts and i can get hundreds of likes on three you know three words because my community will loves nfts right and if i tweet about a, a big pfp project that i'm performing about they're gonna go freaking crazy whereas a big celebrity does it it doesn't get those first likes in the 10 minutes or 20 minutes because they don't tweet about NFTs and then it gets buried. And the more we move towards social media algorithmic style posts, the more important it'll be to, to pick someone in the right niche because these days and age, it's not even about your initial followers. It's about if you can target the right niche and then get the right video expansion to get that viral algorithmic growth. So anyway, we could go on all day. Glassy, I know you gotta run. This podcast has been freaking sweet. I want to let Sheba close it up in case she has any closing words here. But man, we just did a great deep dive on why to collect music and NFTs and where the space is going. So shout out to you, Glassy. Thanks for being on. Yeah, my pleasure, dude. Um, we're building. We're going to just stay steady at it. Uh, I love that you're doing these and publishing on multiple channels. It's a smart way to do it. That's how we keep growing. You're absolutely right about the algorithms. You're absolutely right about the SEO, structured metadata. These kind of things are tools and best practices that when we put them at our disposal, we benefit, right? We're all businesses, whether we're individual brands or whether we're building together as community businesses and brands or whether we're collectively building enterprises or however we want to phrase it. Um, each of these really need these business best practices. And it's great that you keep holding these stages and giving people access and visibility to each other i think that's a big thing that we can do uh but yeah motivate stimulate can't wait to see those events happening right around the corner in nyc so let's go let's go shiba uh we better see each other in new york i'll just say that we got it one way or another we got to make sure we connect this time we're like I, dancing I around miami not quite connecting <laughs> well it's definitely gonna happen um i'll definitely close comments here and then I'll jump into a few things before we go but i appreciate it dill um you know i've known you for a minute uh, i love the music nft space i love web3 um i like what you're doing like uh, just as glassy said we have to get it out on multiple platforms as much as i hate using tiktok and youtube i've been uh, endeavoring more into making videos uh, on tiktok to get used to some of this uh 
I can't wait for the explosion this year, too, in the space in general. If you're going to be at New York, I'll leave on this. If you're going to be in New York City or if you're in the tri-state area or think about coming to one of these events, come. I promise you, you don't need to spend $700 to go to the main event. You can message any one of us on this stage, Dill, me, V, across the board. There's tons of chat rooms where people are going to be in, you know, just open up a quick conversation. Be like, do you guys know if anything's going on? And just come into the city. There's definitely events for you to hit. We have the web stock. We have a few other probably music events that we're doing. I'll be jumping around going to uh, community NFT events with a plus one in my pocket. So if you want to be a plus one and hang out at Shiva, um, just bring weed with you. And sometimes we'll, we'll look for like a Chipotle in the city or something when we get hungry. But uh, yeah, man, it's going to be really cool. I can't wait to see where this year takes us in the space in general. Really excited. Hell yeah, man. Thank you, Shiva. Can't wait to see you guys at New York. It's going down at Webstock. I'll be headlining. That's my main event. Playing a couple other events as well. But I think I'll see you guys both at Webstock. It seems like a lot of people are coming out. The whole crew will be there and can't wait. So let's get it, guys. Thank you for listening to Music and FD Radio Podcast. If you're still with us, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube to Music NFT Radio, as well as all podcast sites where you can find us. And you can find a ton of different episodes about everything in Web3, NFTs, crypto, any topic you might need help with. We probably covered it. So go check it out at musicnftradio.com and we will see you next.